the former Texas Tech quarterback. And uh, y- y- people can try to tell you what's going to happen this week. They can try to tell you what's going to happen on Thursday yeah. night. What's the best piece of advice you've been given leading up to the draft? I mean, just just be ready for anything. The team that you think is going to draft you probably won't get you. So, I mean, that's just the best piece of advice for me. I'm not going to be set on one team. I'm hoping to draft me. I'm just going to be out there ready just for whatever situation and try to and try to be ready for the, to make the most, best of that. Okay. Do you feel like teams have lied to you without naming names? Uh, not, not necessarily. I feel like a lot of teams have held their cards close to their chests. I mean, they, they haven't really let me know what they're thinking. But I feel but like— But do you ask? Do you— do you come right out and say, hey, draft me, or will you take me? Uh, not that extreme, but I, I kind of ask just to kind of see where they're at. And I, for the most part, I mean, they, they, they let me know that they're, I'm, they're considering me. And I feel like a lot of teams like me, so I'm just trying to open to whatever happens. Okay, but where do you want to go? If I said you're, you, you're not going to start, but you're going to go to – you're going to go later in the first round, but you'll go to a good team, let's say Arizona. I like you with Arizona because mm-hmm. Carson Palmer's there for one more year. You get Bruce Arians. Granted, you won't have Larry Fitzgerald probably because he'll probably retire with Carson Palmer. But is Arizona a place where you're with a better franchise, a, a winning team, good coach, and you can learn under Carson Palmer? I mean, that, that definitely would be awesome. I mean, just you learn behind him with a great franchise, like you said, and great coaching. And for me, it's not necessarily the team I'm getting picked by or where at in the draft. I just want to get coached well. And I feel like a lot of a lot of teams have good, great coaches, like, and a lot of situations would work out well. But when you hear this, uh, a system quarterback that came out yesterday, like, mm-hmm. what do you make of that? That Texas Tech has always had great quarterbacks who put up big numbers, but it doesn't translate to the NFL. Yeah, I mean, they have they have, they don't see how much I actually do on the field. If they they're still calling me a system quarterback at this point, they don't understand that I'm changing plays I'm, I'm i'm signaling all the plays and like we're looking at a sign I, i'm in total control of that offense and i i mean i feel like with the throws and I've you have made, freedom to do whatever you wanted to do oh with yeah Texas. I, I could change any play at any time coach kingsbury let me do that so i mean it, it, i feel like he prepared me well to where I, I, i'm gonna have that freedom in, in nfl but i mean the biggest thing for me is just getting exposed to the new stuff getting exposed to protections getting exposed to different NFL West Coast or whatever play concepts and then getting exposed to more defenses. And, I, I mean, just learning those things, I feel like I'll process it well. And, uh, I mean, that's the only thing that I feel like I haven't done in college that, I mean, haven't done done yet that I did in college. But also that you hear, oh, he's got a big arm. Mm-hmm. As if there's nothing else to you. Oh, you yeah. just have this big arm that you go out there like your Popeye. Mm-hmm. Um, there have been guys who've had big arms that haven't played well. There are guys who have big arms who have played well. Mm-hmm. How do you read that when somebody says, oh, yeah, he's got a big arm? If you have a big arm, you have to have touch, too. You have to be able to throw the short balls, the long ones, the in-betweens. I mean, really, having the big arm is awesome. It's a, definitely a plus to have. It opens up a whole variety of throws that a lot, a lot of people can do. But you got to still be able to be accurate with the short throws, be consistent, have touch, and all that stuff, too, and I feel like I do. Now, we should mention your dad was a former Major League pitcher, but how did that, if any, did it prepare you for this moment? I mean, it, it did a ton. Just watching how professional athletes work, the work ethic they have. And I mean, everybody sees them and they think they're just that talented. They show up and they hit home runs every every pitch. They don't see them in the batting cages hitting on the tees for hours, doing the stuff no one else wants to do. And that's the stuff I saw when I was a little kid growing up. And you were in New York when the Subway Series was going mm-hmm. on, weren't you? So your dad was on the Mets when the Mets played the Yankees in the World Series. Yes, sir. What do you remember? I re- that's when I really start first remember. I remember I don't remember a ton of the games, but I remember being out there on the field, the atmosphere, the during BP and all that different stuff. But I mean, it was I mean the atmosphere was crazy. I mean that's where the moments that you want to be at as a, especially as a quarterback in the NFL. Did you cry when your dad lost? Uh, I don't remember. Probably did though. <laughs> I, I would I wouldn't lie. Probably did. But did you walk up to Jeter and any of those? You know? Yeah, I mean, I I got to meet Derek Jeter. I have a picture with him where I'm taking ground balls with him at shortstop when my dad was in the Rangers actually. And then I got to meet Derek Jeter. I got to meet Mike Piazza, uh, Alex Rodriguez, a ton of guys. I mean, a ton of guys that are MLB players. And I mean, I did you just you watch those guys. I mean, when you're young, that's all you look at is those those great players, and then you see all the other stuff they do whenever you're in the position I was in. But you're looking up to baseball players, but here mm. you are wanting to be a football player. Yeah, I mean, definitely. It just it came on late, and I fell in love with it right when I started playing it. And uh, I mean, I just love playing quarterback. I love having that pressure on you. 
I love getting the win and lose football games. I mean, you can't ask for anything more. I mean, than winning a football game with your your teammates after grinding out all off season just to pl- play with sixteen games in the NFL and then tw- maybe four more. What? Did, what? How many attempts against Oklahoma? Eighty eight. Come on. <laughs> There, there was there there wasn't a game where I was close to that. It was just one of those games where I was I was hot. The receivers were making plays. Everything in New York and Lyle was blocking well, so we we just kept kept it going. Is your arm sore? Not uh, not really. My arm didn't really get sore, so I mean it was something. That we, but, but your dad didn't throw eighty eight pitches in a game. Yeah, I mean it was it was more uh, what's called uh, at practice. We throw probably 200, 200, 250 balls a game at practice. So I'm used to throwing a lot. What's your plan for draft night? I'm actually uh, going to have a party back in Tyler, Texas with my family and friends. So to, no interest in going to the draft? No, I got invited. I mean, it was definitely an opportunity I looked into and that I thought I might want to do, but I really wanted to just spend it with my family and friends, all my family and friends, and uh, I knew I couldn't do that when, if, I, if I went to the draft. What if you just wear your Texas Tech uniform at home during the draft, like your full uniform, taped up, ready to go? I mean, that could be a good thing, I would think. Yeah, I mean, you're ready to, you're ready to play there. Yeah, I'm going to have to... I might be ready to go practice the next day, I guess. But did you think, give any thought to you sit in the green room? Mm-hmm. And if you don't get drafted, you can sit in the green room for a while. I mean, yeah, you've definitely seen it in the, the last few drafts. I mean, you saw it with certain guys. I mean, but it, it doesn't, that wasn't really the main point of me not going. For me, it was just all about I can only take seven, eight people if I go where, where I can spend it with 25 of my closest friends that have been there forever and family members. So I thought that was pretty much the reason I chose to stay. Um, I remember coming in, and it wasn't the game against Oklahoma. I came in on a Monday, and I, I like I was fascinated in, in watching you know, Oklahoma State game. Mm-hmm. I came in, and I go, I, I even text these guys. I said, turn on whatever channel it was, and it was like, I don't even want 40 something to 40 something at mm-hmm. halftime. And like, it was crazy. Yeah. I thought you guys were both going to score 80. How would you describe your style of play? Cause it's different than any quarterback I saw this year. Yeah. I mean, going in my mindset uh, was we're going to score every single drive. Uh, I mean, I, and I truly believe every single drive of the entire football game, no matter if we start at the one, our one yard line, or if we started at the 40, I thought we were going to score that drive. I thought we were going to score a touchdown. And so, I mean, this, that mindset, I always, I took chances and, it worked out most of the time. Sometimes it, it did. Sometimes it didn't. But I mean, as you you learn as you get older, you learn from your mistakes. And so I mean, just the mindset of I'm gonna go out there and I feel like we we can beat anybody. Did you ever get down on yourself? Uh, I mean, after after some of the losses I took, I, I definitely was I'm down and sad. But I mean, knowing that I had another opportunity coming, knowing that I had another chance to win uh, the next week, I always would bounce back fast. Does anybody play defense in the Big Twelve? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I feel like the. I mean, you see it when we play other schools. I mean, we don't. There's not as many points given up when we play SEC schools and we play Big Ten, whatever we do at Pac-12. I mean, it. The Big Twelve, we get knocked about our defenses. But I think it's more our offenses are just just that good. Who was the best team you faced in your career? My career, the best team I faced was probably LSU. Uh, just the most talented team I, I faced. Few athletes yeah. out there. But uh, Oklahoma, my my sophomore year was pretty good too. Do you have the hair a little bit higher just to make you look taller? No, I, I, something that I started growing. I was with what? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He he looks six five. Yeah, it feels like that. Maybe that's uh, <laughs> no. It, that's by design, there, Patrick. Actually, one of, actually me and one of my friends after my freshman year of college decided we're not gonna cut our hair, so we just let it grow out. How'd that go over with mom? She she's fine with it. Uh, every, every one of my family seems to like it more than it was before. What do you get, mom, when you uh, get drafted? I'm buying her a purse. A purse. Yes. You've already. Wait. Did she already tell you what she wanted? She didn't tell me, but she. I mean, she. She has she a sun, subtle, subtle hit. <laughs> <laughs> As you're walking by one, one, one of the, uh, you know, the uh, stores here, she yeah, said, I'm, "Boy, I'd certainly like to have that." Patrick. I mean, yeah. I mean, definitely. We got to New York, and she saw a couple stores that she was kind of. Oh, I like that store. You walk by the <laughs> by the coach coach stores yeah. when you walk by. Yeah, Paulie. Dan, the I team just talked to uh, Patrick's mom. Patrick may have misunderstood. She said Porsche, not purse. Oh, purse. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Is that okay? No, I don't know about. That yet. <laughs> Maybe a second contract or something. <laughs> hey, well, have fun uh, at home and uh, good luck. Uh, by the way, if you have, uh, if you're watching on Direct TV, the Audience Network or uh, NBC Sports Network, we did this with Deshaun Watson first hour. That is uh, something that was on a Mardi Gras float. That's my face, believe it or not, there, Patrick. Okay. All right, you get two throws. You have to hit me right on the nose. All right. Okay. About uh, 18 yards away. 
Okay. And you can put a dent. You can, you know, rearrange my nose if you want to there. Okay. Yeah, it's up, I mean, you got a big arm, <laughs> or so I've been told. So uh, during the live look-in, we'll give you two shots there and see if you can uh, hit me on the nose. All right, sounds All right. good. That's uh, Patrick Mahomes, hopefully going in the uh, first round, and maybe to Arizona for some reason. I don't know why I'm locked in on that, but that'd be a nice landing spot for him. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.